Hey everyone, welcome back. Well, there's been a lot of progress since the last video. On the carpentry side, the current focus is filling in the interior walls and work on the flooring has started as well. Most of the time, it's just two carpenters working, a father and son team. For certain jobs that require more people, support workers are called in, like for the frame construction, or when we need specialists, like for plumbing or electrical wiring. Plumbing work started pretty early in the process, and I was surprised to come home from work one day to find the bathroom module already in place. First, let's take a look from the outside. Styrofoam. I guess it's a good insulator, but I expected something a little more high-tech. Now the inside. This is one area of the house where we went with prefab. So yeah, our bathroom looks the same as 90% of other homes in Japan. The visual aesthetic is obviously a matter of personal opinion, but as for function, these little units are great. Just what you'd expect from a culture where space management and bathing have both been elevated to the level of fine arts. Anyway, so the plumbing seems to be just about done now. Except... What's going on here? When we designed this house, we carefully considered the places where pipes need to go. Upstairs, that would be the kitchen sink, dishwasher, a small sink on the patio, and another one at the top of the stairs, and of course, toilet. But we didn't think about the route the pipes would take to get to and from those places. Now, the problem here is that since we're planning on leaving these overhead beams exposed, that pipe is coming through lower than where the ceiling is supposed to be. This is one of the issues of having different people handle different construction tasks. The carpenters know we want high, unfinished ceilings, but apparently the people doing the plumbing assume that it will all be covered up. Well, I'm sure we'll be able to figure something out. Knock on wood. And the wiring. Well, our new house suddenly became a jungle. I'd never really considered how many wires run through the walls of a home. Maybe we went overboard with the power outlets? So yeah, most of the flooring is finished now. You can't actually see it because it's covered up for protection until the construction is completed. As I mentioned in an earlier video, we went with Hinoki, or Japanese Cypress, for our main living space upstairs because of its beautiful light color, durability, and amazing smell. And downstairs, we went with a variety of maple. Cheaper, but still durable and nice looking. And you may have noticed that we have windows now as well. We went with highly insulating ones to keep the heat inside in the winter and cool, conditioned air inside in the summer. 
Our previous house was basically uninsulated, and I was very determined to get this part right with the new place. More about that in a minute. Let's head outside to my future favorite place, the patio. Making a decent sized second floor patio in Japan does present some design challenges. Specifically, it has to be able to withstand the intense winds and extremely heavy rainfall of the typhoons that come through every year. Can you spot the typhoon proofing features? Since the pool deck look isn't really what I want for my patio, I'm planning on doing a little remodeling on my own after the main construction out here is finished. And I guess this is a good time to talk about the solar central heating system we're putting in. Back in the last video, I showed the concrete base under our house, insulated around the perimeter but not in the middle, and asked what purpose that might serve. Not many takers on that one. Well, it was a pretty tricky question. But as you may have guessed at this point, it does relate to our central heating system. Traditionally, Japanese homes were said to be designed for summer. Basically, wind could flow through them easily to keep everyone cool on those scorching August afternoons. Then, as construction practices shifted after the Second World War, a new style of housing emerged that was uncomfortable both in winter and summer. I used that track way too much. So where were we? Post-war Japanese housing. Right. Well, the idea was to build fast and cheap, initially out of necessity after the devastation of the Second World War. And then due to the hyper consumeristic sky stay culture that took hold in the 80s, why build your home to last when you can knock it down and rebuild it in 20 or 30 years? My family's previous home had been built right at the end of that era. It had flimsy walls, almost no insulation, and was absolutely freezing in the winter. Central heating is not an option when your walls and windows aren't thick enough to keep the heat inside. In the summer, it was only livable if we kept the air conditioning running on high most of the time. Well, I'm happy to say that construction practices, along with people's values, have changed quite a bit in recent years. Most of the new houses in Japan are built to high standards, strong enough to withstand earthquakes, energy efficient, and even quite well insulated. Central heating, while isn't exactly standard yet, is getting more and more common these days too. So anyway, when we decided to rebuild our family home, we had some attractive options to choose from. We ended up going with a smaller local company that specializes in building centrally heated homes using mostly traditional Japanese construction methods. Basically, it works like this. There's a special solar heating module placed on the roof that heats both air and water, and then, supplied by energy from a smaller photovoltaic panel, pumps it to where it's needed around the house. In the case of the heated air, it's pumped directly down to a special concrete-lined pocket under the first floor of the house. The space around the perimeter, and also under the concrete, is insulated, keeping the heat from being lost that way. So, the hot air just does what it does naturally and rises, up through carefully placed vents in the floor, to heat the whole house. In the summer, the flow is reversed, and hot air is vented through the roof. The various pumps and fans that control the system are all kept up here under the roof. I'll be happy to show you how it works in more detail once the system's in place. 
but as you can imagine, I'm really looking forward to spending next winter in a warm, centrally heated home. Will it meet my probably unrealistically high Canadian standards? I'll let you know next winter. As much as I enjoyed climbing up that ladder every time, having real stairs leading up to the second floor just makes this feel more like a proper house. Also, now I guess I can invite some friends over to have a beer out on the patio. Beer and ladders don't go well together in my experience. Something to look forward to in the near future. Thanks for watching till the end. I was going to finish this up with a tour showing the progress a few weeks after the stairs are finished. But I think I'll leave that for next time. In case you were wondering, the issue with the exposed pipes does get resolved, and we do get to keep our high ceiling and exposed beams. You can see the end result of that and the rest of the finished ceiling in the next video. You'll also see the completion of the interior walls and what we're doing for our home's exterior siding. See you then.